The second area is kingdom mindset. Set free and staying free despite fear, pr fierce pressure of the outside world is that this kingdom mindset is so huge. And this has been a place of, of renewal for me is that when I realized uh, in one of my readings of the New Testament, how many verses ended up coming up saying, you know, it began with uh, John 8, 30, 36. Those that the Son set free are free indeed. And I had to con be confronted with that verse. Of, it doesn't say those that the Son set free are free for a little while. Those that the Son set free are free until Wednesday, which is why they added that Wednesday night service. Is it those that are free are set free indeed? And then I came across Galatians 5.1 that says, Now that Christ has set you free, now make sure you stay free. And I came across uh, Colossians 1.23. It says, Continue to believe this truth. Stand firmly in it. Do not drift away from the assurance you first received. The verse of, uh, you know, fight the good fight of faith. There were so many verses that now that you've been set free, now make sure you stay free. And it begins with your mindset. The attitude, taking on and putting on the attitude of Christ. And that's where it's so important because there was a quote that really hit me from uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, a psychologist out of Canada. And he was being confronted because he was doing these Bible lectures. But people would always ask him, well, do you believe in God? Are you a Christian? They really wanted him to answer that and give him a clear, clear answer. And he said this. He said when he was confronted by these Christians asking him, do you believe in God? He said there's a real stumbling block to believing in God. Because there's no limit to what might happen if you actually acted like God existed. You Christians are not sufficiently transformed for me to believe that you even believe in God. The way you live is not a sufficient testament to the truth you, you claim to believe. Christians don't manifest the transformational attitude that would enable the outside observer to conclude that they believe. You're telling me that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and yet you still act this way. And it is this truth of being set free and staying free that came out of this. And I truly believe that one of the biggest issues for Christians is being trapped in a worldly mindset. And in uh, the verse in, that comes to, to mind, and actually first, what a mindset is, it's just the, the attitudes, beliefs, and values of a person. The attitudes, beliefs, and values of a person that shapes how they perceive and then interact with the world around them. And so we got to step out and be renewed because in, even in 2 Kings chapter 17, it says this about those that had come into the faith with the Jews. It says, And though they worshiped the Lord, they continued to follow their own gods according to the religious customs of the nations from which they came. And this is still going on today. They continued to follow their former practices instead of truly worshiping the Lord and obeying the decrees, regulations, instructions, and commands that he gave the descendants of Jacob, whose name he changed to Israel. This is why the Bible talks about there's, there's B.C. before Christ. There's A.D. after death. Because we are called as Christians to die to ourselves, to be born again. And then to experience the renewing of your mind from which you become a new creation in Christ. You take off the old and you put on the new. Is that this is how the New Testament talks about us as Christians. That you got to get out of this old worldly thinking from your habits and your patterns of, of the world. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but allow for the renewing of your mind and be transformed in Christ. And you come out of that. Colossians, take it off. Put it on. You're putting on the new nature. You were dead and now you're alive. But you've got to be careful that you don't continue to follow the customs of the nation from which you came. You've got to be careful to continue to walk and so that you don't follow the former practices from what you were set free from. And this is where the pain points set in for people is because there's so many people that are walking in that struggle of, you know, I'm, I'm this Christian, but I don't know what is going on, but I keep walking in all this old stuff. And we got to be set free from the patterns of this world because I truly believe that whoever controls your measurement and thinking for a well-lived life, what that looks like, what that feels like, what accounts for that, that person ultimately controls your level of freedom. And I experienced that firsthand for 20 years 
I have watched so many others experience that too, is that coming out of the pattern, the patterns of the world tell you what a, what a success looks like in this world. And you've got to come out of that because even when Jesus refers to Peter as, as Satan, he says, get behind me, Satan, for you are a dangerous trap to me. When I read that last time, I was like, oh, dang, I got to hit the pause button. What exactly is the dangerous trap? He says, get behind me, Satan, for you're a dangerous trap to me because you merely see things from a human point of view, not from God's. That's Satan's dangerous trap. I watched a TEDx talk where a magician was talking about what magicians do and their role. And he said this, which always just created this lasting memory. He said, the magician's job is to make you confuse what's important with what's extraneous. It makes, the magician makes you focus on the wrong things and filter out what's truly important. And that's where the sleight of hand happens. And that's exactly what Satan does to us, is he gets us to focus on the extraneous and forget the important. And we see this because in the Western world, it tells you what a well-lived life looks like. It means that you gotta have a bachelor's degree. And oh wait, not anymore, because the new bachelor's is the master's. You need a master's degree. And you don't just need a master's degree, but you also need a really a fulfilling job that brings you meaning and significance, because that's where you're going to leave your lasting mark is in your career. And oh yeah, you don't just need a career, but you should also probably have some sort of unique entrepreneurial side hustle. And not only that, but you should also get married and find a nice spouse that's going to support you in all those endeavors. And you should also have some kids along the way with that as well. And then as you're doing that, you need to now start saving uh, for them to get into college as well. So that means we got to get them the best teachers, the best coaches, the best personal trainers, and, and get out on these traveling teams and all these different engagements to keep us busy so that they can now have a shot at the American dream of getting into college. And they can now run through this whole thing and repeat the patterns of the world. Meanwhile, we never actually stop and truly live for God because we're pursuing these patterns of the world all out with everything that we got. And while we're saving for our kids' college fund, we're paying off our own. And then when we send them off to college, the research shows that 50% of those Christians that head off to college lose their faith while they're there. Yet we've just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it. And now their minds get, get further ingrained in the patterns of the world if we're not careful. And so this is why this is so, so important because while we were so caught up in all that busyness, we forgot to read the word or we would have realized that God says, do not be conformed to these patterns, but allow for the renewing of the mind. He says in 1 John chapter 2, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and, and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. John 10.10 10 says that Christ came to give life and life abundantly. So why are you looking to the patterns of the world to bring you life and life abundantly? In Matthew 6, 33, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other essential things will be added to you. But instead, we pursue the patterns of the world, and maybe we seek 40th the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so this kingdom mindset is to truly, it's based on these seven biblical principles, and it works through this mindset model that goes through it to help people unpack how your mindset affects your, your perception, your thoughts your emotional reactions, your behaviors, but how your mindset is affected from small groups like your family of origin to teams and coaches to organizations and schools and companies you work for and the media and the spirit of the age and how much we have to actually guard our minds so that we can actually stay free and walk in that truth so that we can live that way. And I'll just give you three real quick that have totally flipped my world upside down because for 20 years, I did the exact opposite. The very first principle is that it's not about you, your kingdom, it's about God's kingdom. Number two is that it's not about your will being done, it's about God's will being done. Is that our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done. And then John 17, three, this is the way to eternal life, to know him. That the third is that it's not about this life, it's about eternal life. Yet for 20 years, all my prayers were about God building my kingdom through doing my will, and it was about all the comforts of this life. Those three things alone will flip people upside down in, in what they experience. And I heard uh, something that haunted me, which was I saw a meme that said, if all your prayers were, were answered, 
Would it change the world or just yours? And I was confronted with the reality that the world would not be changed by the prayers that I was praying. My world would be changed. And that was the extent of it.